the government is taking a wrecking ball to its own agreement. I don't believe that the bill is the way forward. That is why, sadly, I shall not be supporting it tonight. And it will diminish the standing of the United Kingdom in the eyes of the world, and I cannot support it. I don't think we should really need to say this, but it's absolutely vital that the UK government should be able to respect the international obligations that it enters into freely. You do not break international law and alienate our partners and allies, not just in Europe, but across the world. And the honourable gentleman should know better. Today, 18 months after it came into the force, the government is taking a wrecking ball to its own agreement. I thank him for giving way, and I refer him to the comments that were made by the member for Leeds. Uh, 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 indeed, a, a very good proposal that was made just a few moments ago that uh, he would trigger and should trigger Article 16. Is the opposition, Her Majesty's opposition, agreeing with that proposal? Do you believe, does the Shadow Secretary believe that Article 16 should be triggered and triggered now? This opposition thinks that there is a better way forward through negotiation, but at least the proposition he suggests is legal. And I'll come on to that in a moment. This bill is damaging and counterproductive. The strategy behind it is flawed. The legal justification for it is feeble. The precedent it sets is dangerous. And the timing could hardly be worse. I will give way. Very grateful. The protocol makes very clear the primacy of the Good Friday Agreement for peace in Northern Ireland and says that the EU will respect our internal market. They are doing neither. What is his policy to persuade them to do so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Negotiate. Yes, Just is. as this does as this opposition did to get the Good Friday Agreement. Yeah, we negotiate. Yeah, yeah. The argument supporting it are flimsy at best and irrational at worst. It's a bill that risks economically harmful retaliation. A bill that runs the risk of shredding our reputation as a guardian of international law and a rules-based system. How in the name of heaven can we expect to speak to others with authority when we ourselves shun at a moment's notice our legal obligation? If I don't get my own way on everything, I'm going to take my ball off the pitch. I'm going to act unilaterally. I'm going to act off my own bat. That is not the way to do it. It has to pass all of the tests as set out in the, uh, in the statute, and it doesn't. I mean, it's not only just marking your own homework, it's copying somebody else's homework and then claiming all of the credit yourself. That this is all gamemanship and muscle flexing. Belfast Port is now handling a record amount of port, 25.6 million tonnes of cargo last year. The food and drink sector is benefit benefiting. More Irish business is buying stuff from Northern Ireland. This is minutes. good for Northern Ireland PLC. In conclusion, Madam Deputy Speaker, the Henry VIII clauses are wrong. The purpose of the bill is wrong. The necessity isn't proven. Although well, I have to say to the lone minister sitting on the front bench that I do not welcome this bill. Thinking about this bill, I actually started off by asking myself three questions. First of all, do I consider this to be legal under international law? Second, will it achieve its aims? And third, does it at least maintain the standing of the United Kingdom in the eyes of the world? And my answer to all three of those questions is no. Lord Butler, who was head of the civil service for, for 10 years, has said that this country has repeatedly criticised states like Russia and China for breaking the rules-based international order and yet now holds that it's perfectly justified itself to breach international law. And it seems we've gone from a, a limited and specific breach to something which in this bill is potentially extensive and egregious. Even General Sir Richard Barnes, a former Joint Chief of uh, Joint Forces Command who served in Afghanistan, Iraq and Northern Ireland, has said that what the government is proposing is short-sighted tactics which will do much harm strategically in the wider world. In fact, what is being done is particularly stupid. That means that the bill that we are proposing to put through this House tonight will be a gross breach if it is enacted and implemented of international law. When we criticise perhaps President Putin for breaking international law, which of course he does over and over again, 
Would you know I'm a, I think the Honourable Member for giving weight, but really, does he think that that is a, a fair comparison to make? Um, could I gently suggest to my young friend that if I hadn't thought it was a fair comparison, I wouldn't have made it. 